Can I more. taste your juice? Hey folks, P. Bissardo. Um, I made a little mistake uh, in the last video. What was the mistake? Uh, I mentioned mom's cooking and I didn't show any of it. And, and mom was a little bit disappointed. So let me share some of... Uh, sorry, we can't have mom disappointed. Uh, let me share some of mom's cooking with you. Because uh, she, she is an amazing woman. Uh, she does a, a tremendous job with Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm so thankful to have her uh, as a mom and, and, and cooking uh, this, this in this way. Uh, it is the reason why I am the the way that I am. Um, so there you go. Here's here's a picture of mom right here, and let's add uh, dad in the mix too. So uh, mom, a giant uh, thumbs up for you, and of course a street shout out as well. Love you, mom. Okay, so uh, for this review right here, so many questions, so many questions about that right there that I can now show you. Uh, the K-Fun V4, what were the two big issues with the original uh, K-Funds? Filling, right? Filling this one. You hold it right down here, you unscrew this, that locks the liquid control, then you continue to unscrew this part right up here, okay? And then we fill it with e-liquid, then we take this part right here and we screw it back on like that, and then we screw this down, this will open the flow control back up and you go ahead and vape it. What was the other big problem with it? Working on the deck, but having to drain it first. Well, no, not with this one anymore. Uh, what we do is we unscrew it from our device, we unscrew it from this section right here, like uh, this, just like this, okay? Uh, and then what we can do is the liquid stays in the tank and we can go ahead and we can work on our deck. When we're done working on our deck, we go ahead and replace this part right here. We screw it back onto our device and we start vaping again. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you again soon. Can I taste your juice? You thought you were going to get off that easy. Uh, no, no. Of course, we are going to take a full look at the, uh, the K-Fun V4 from Svomesto. Uh, and we're also going to add to the stocking. <gasps> the stocking's not there. And of course, we're going to add to the stocking. All right, so what is it? Where are you going to get it? How much is it going to cost you? Obviously, it is the next K-Fun. It's the K-Fun V4. So it is a rebuildable tank atomizer, an RTA. All right, um, where are you going to get it? How much is it going to cost you? Uh, in the U.S., uh, they are going to be sold at uh, VaporRev or VaporRev.com. Uh, Internationally, you're going to be able to get this at um, selfesteam.com, also at cloud9vaping.co.uk. Uh, and then for a, uh, a further list of vendors, you can go right to the uh, Svomesto website given here in uh, this link right here. All right, the price on this one, it's going to be $185, about $185. US dollars. Okay, so that's going to be the price for this. Of course, you get the kit. There there are a couple of different configurations that you're going to be able to do uh, with the kit, Different some, some different tank options for you, and we are going to take a look at all of that. Uh, I'm going to do a build on this one. I'm going to break it down. How far am I going to break this down? Because take a look at this, okay? Um, don't let that scare you. Don't let that frighten you. Uh, because you, uh, I'm certainly not going to break it down that far. Uh, and you don't have to break it down that far either to work with it. It's extremely easy to work with, even though a lot has gone into this, uh, you know, from an engineering perspective. Okay. So, uh, we're going to break it down, but not that far. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm going to do for you, because you may notice this right now, it's sitting on the P3. Okay. The Pro Vary. Uh, but I don't have it on there with the 510 connection. Oh, no. Uh, I have it on here with the P3 connection. And there are a few different kinds of connections uh, that you can get for the KFUN V4. Uh, and I'm going to show you in this video how we change this from the 510 connection over to the uh, to the P3 connection. Uh, or And I'm sure it would be a similar process for the other types of connections as well. And we're going to talk about those too. And then at some point, we're probably going to talk about how it vapes. How it vapes. Let's go ahead and vape it. Let's do that. Here we go. We're vaping it. So how it vapes, kind of jumping the gun a little bit here, but how it vapes is, um, as expected, stellar. Absolutely stellar. You know, um, people originally, they they, they, um, they accused me of being a Provary fanboy, and then they accused me of being a K-Fun fanboy. No, what I'm a fanboy of is those things that work. Okay, those things that work really, really well. Um, the K-Fun V4, like the K-Fun before it, 
works really, really well. And I've said that about the K-Fun. Uh, it's the closest thing that I've gotten to, uh, to vaping perfection um, as far as how it performs, how easy it is to build. Um, with this one, I have it set up for a single coil. For me, for my vaping habits, I see absolutely no need for a dual coil. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that's going to be, you know, that's totally dependent on how you vape. Okay, for me, one coil is fine. Okay, I just really don't want to be bothered building two coils, to be honest with you. Um, and, and the performance uh, on this with a single coil is just absolutely stellar. Absolutely stellar. We'll vape it again. Fantastic. All right, so before we take a look at the kit and we see what uh, comes in the kit, let's take a look at their little animation preview video for the, uh, the K-Fun V4. Okay, folks, so here is the box that the new K-Fun V4 comes in, okay? We see K-Fun 4 right there. Uh, we see the new Sfomesto logo right there. Everything stays different. Uh, we do have a um, authorized genuine product sticker right here that actually seals the box. On the other side, we see, of course, designed in Russia, made in Germany, uh, which is the case. We break this seal and we open it up and we get a Svomesto poster here of the K-Fun that uh, everybody should have next to their poster of Dimitri at home. Uh, we have a uh, K-Fun V4 instruction manual, a rather good, rather detailed instruction manual. And this is in both English and I'm assuming that's German as well. And then we get the device itself. Now, uh, when this device comes to you, I believe the metal section will be on the, um, the device. I think that's how it came. I have since replaced the metal section with the glass section, but you do get all three of your tank options, okay? So you get the device itself, as always, if yours comes pre-filled with e-liquid, send it back. Uh, we get the, um, the metal tank section right here, and you can see on the metal tank section, we de do see some, uh, some nice engraving in here, and we see uh, Svomesto on there as well, and then we get the full uh, plexi section here as well. So uh, if you are not into the, the bulge, because you see that bulge right there, uh, this is going to be the one, the section that you're going to want to use, and we'll see that as, as we uh, get more and more into this. All right, we'll do a little bit of a size comparison, and this probably is not a fair comparison because I don't have uh, an original K-Fun 3.1 with the fill port on the bottom, so I'm kind of comparing this to a, uh, a light plus here. So um, not really a fair comparison. Also not a fair comparison uh, because I do have the, uh, the P3 connector on there, and you can see that actually does add a little bit of length if we compare that to what the just the standard 510 uh, connection would look like which would sit right about there so it does add a little bit of length uh, but anyway just to give you an idea of the difference in size uh, let's go ahead and line this up down here at the bottom as if we were looking at this with a 510 you can see it's almost the same height really it doesn't it's not going to add a whole lot of, um, of height to your device uh, so they've been able to do this um, with all of this extra gear going on down here uh, without adding a whole lot of height to the device, okay? Uh, you know, with the, once the drip tip and everything is installed. Uh, obviously, if I take these drip tips off, you'll see a little bit of a bigger difference, okay? So if I take that drip tip off, and I take this drip tip off, okay, now you can see a little bit of a bigger difference there, okay? But uh, it's not too bad. And uh, the dimensions are, are, for the most part, the same. This is uh, 22 millimeters down here, uh, but we do have this bulge here in the center uh, because of the tank section that I have installed. Uh, let's just go ahead and verify that real quick. Let's take out the calipers. Let's check out this part right here, and this should be 22 millimeters, and it is, uh, or close enough, with the, these calipers anyway. And then if we take a look at the uh, the bulge section here, it should be a little bit greater than 22 millimeters. Make sure I got that on the right way, right about there. 
and we're at about uh, about 23 millimeters at the bulge. Uh, if we take a look at the device itself, uh, we have a drip tip that comes with it, and that's um, kind of matching the pattern that we see here. All right, so it's kind of like this little swirly spiral thing that's going on. Of course, this drip tip is removable, and you could use your own drip tip on this. All right. Um, we get the top cap, we get the glass uh, section right here, we get this section, we get uh, and the rest of this uh, here. Now you'll notice I've already removed the, uh, the P3 connection because I am going to show you how to go from the, uh, the standard 510 connection, which is the connection that you get to the, um, to the P3 connection. Now on here we also have the new Svomesto logo right there, okay, and uh, we have airflow control on this as well, but it's underneath the pin, so it's not like we can rotate this section right here. Now this ring right here at the bottom is going to be your liquid flow control, okay, and you'll start to rotate this and then you'll notice some resistance and it turns and turns and it turns and then it stops, okay, and right there it is stopped. So this is how you turn on and off your liquid uh, control. This is also going to be the control that you're going to use before and after you fill it. And to get at your build deck, you're not unscrewing it from here. You're actually unscrewing it from right above this, um, I don't want to call this knurled, but this, um, this airflow intake section right here. So you would just kind of unscrew it there. Okay, and then you're going to get to your build deck. Now, one of the things that I noticed with this when I first got it, it was very difficult to get into the, um, the, the build deck, okay? I don't know if it was just set up really good or if it was just tight, what the deal was, but a little uh, trick here. Take a little micro screwdriver or a um, paper clip, uh, put it in one of your air holes like that, and use that as a, uh, a lever, and you're going to be able to get that open real easy, okay? So a little tip for you there. Now, before we start breaking this down, let me first show you how to fill this tank, okay? Because it is really very, very easy. Uh, it was a little bit of a challenge. It's like a little bit of a learning curve at first, but once you get it, you get it. It's a single unscrewing motion. First, you're unscrewing down here, then you're unscrewing up here. And then when you're done filling, it's a reverse motion. So you're tightening up here, and then you're tightening up down here. So what you wanna do is you wanna hold the base, okay, at the liquid flow control. So right below this um, this air intake section here, and you unscrew it. And not from there, okay, see, not from there. That's the build deck from here, okay? And what you're doing right now is you're shutting off the, the liquid control. So it won't be able to flood at this point, and that's why you're doing that, okay? So when we're tightened, the flow control is open. When we're loosened, the flow control is closed. So we continue that unscrewing motion up here to this top section, and we unscrew it from here, and now we can fill the tank, and we fill it right through there. So let me go ahead and take some e-liquid here, and we'll top this tank off. Very, very easy to fill. No more issues with filling this. There we go, we're topped off, and now we'll screw this. Now, but fill. But Phil, as we screw this down, you're still building pressure. So when we open up this flow control, uh, it, it, all that pressure is gonna force the liquid down and it's gonna flood, right? Uh, no, wrong. Because of the design of this piece right here, and let's take a look at this, uh, we see a flat section right there, right? We see a flat section right there. So it allows the air to escape until the final turn and then it seals, okay? So beautiful design right there. So we just take this and we tighten it up Okay, so it's that continuous motion. So now I'm tightening here, and then I have to tighten down here, and she's ready to vape again, and filling it is that easy. Uh, what do these tanks hold? This is gonna be one of the minor thumbs down here because we do lose a little bit of capacity with the V4, okay? The steel tank, this guy right here, is gonna have your largest liquid capacity, and this one is gonna fit about four and a half mil. The, uh, the glass tank, this guy right here, this is going to have your next largest capacity, and this one is going to fit about 3.9 mil. And then your uh, full plastic tank here, or the polycarbonate tank, uh, this one's gonna fit about 3.8 mil of e-liquid, okay? So we do lose a little bit of capacity over the, um, you know, the K-Fun Light and Light Plus and the older units. Now on the bottom here, we're not gonna see any kind of a logo, we're not gonna see any kind of a serial number. As a matter of fact, the device itself is not serialized. Uh, the only place you're gonna find the serial number is actually on the box itself. This is number 107, all right? Uh, but what we do have here is we have a screw, and this screw 
uh, is an adjustable 510 pin. As a matter of fact, we can adjust this all day long uh, and we don't have to worry about messing up our build that's inside because that pin is no longer directly connected to the, um, the build deck. Now underneath this screw, let's go ahead and take the screw out, uh, what we're going to find down inside the device, and by the way there's that little insulator that sits in there as well that came out with the screw, um, there is the airflow controller. You can see that little screw inside of there. So you are going to need a micro screwdriver to get yourself inside of there to adjust the airflow. And I'll go ahead and do uh, the adjustment on camera for you. You'll be able to feel it when it hits the slot and you'll be able to feel it start to turn. Uh, but I adjust this while I'm drawing on it so I know uh, where the adjustment is. And you'll see that well, right about now. All right, so I do have that 510 pin out, and what you do is you just kind of put your screwdriver in there. I have it fully closed right now. Nothing, right? And I just start to unscrew it. Starting to open up. Until I get it to a point where I like it. Which is about there. And I go ahead and replace my uh, insulator and my 510 pin. Now, uh, so a couple of the thumbs down uh, at this point, right? Uh, we've lost a mill. See, it's like the thumb, the thumbs down are are are, are counterbalanced with with the additional features, right? Um, the loss of a mill of liquid it doesn't really bother me that much because the thing is so easy to fill compared to removing the screw from the bottom or doing the top fill hold the thing upside down you know so we don't have to do that anymore so i'm, I'm not really a whole lot concerned with the um with the loss of a mill of e-liquid uh still going to be in the thumbs down category right uh and the flow control would much rather have it here easily accessible on the outside but uh how many times have i adjusted the airflow on my original k-fun once uh how many times have i adjusted the airflow on this since i got it once to my liking and it's continued to work perfect um, with the different kinds of liquids that I've had in here thicker liquids thinner liquids all right so let's go ahead and put this on a device now and we'll go ahead and have a vape another thing too although I miss my whistle a little bit uh, I haven't heard it from the uh, the new one as a matter of fact let's expand on that comment just a little bit okay because it is virtually silent compared to the light in the light plus no experience with 3.1 i don't have any uh so uh, this one i don't get that slee stack i call it slee stacking sound that i get from the other ones so you still get a crackle right but you can hear this if i'm not firing it it's virtually silent now if i compare that to this light right here You hear that and this light plus right here you can hear it okay so um i think the opening of the airflow here uh adds to a much more silent device when you're using it but you know of course you still get the crackle when you do fire it now what else can i tell you about this before we actually break this down and start to take a look at the build and the build deck and and changing this bottom piece um First of all, it's made of 316L stainless steel. Very tough, very hard, absolutely non-corrosive and high scratch resistance. Okay, there's that. These connectors, uh, like this one right here, which is the P3 connector that I had on it at the beginning of the video, and you'll see me put this back on it in this video. Uh, these connectors, they're going to have a few of these connectors. Let's see, what do they have right now? They have the P3 connector. They have the SM connector for the Semovar. Okay, makes sense, right? Because they make the Semovar, uh, which also fits the, uh, the JD Tech Stingray. Uh, they have plans for a 23 millimeter 510 connector and a Nemesis connector. Now, these connectors are going to be uh, 10 euro, which works out to be about $12.40 US. Now, they also have the 4S kit, and that this right here is the 4S kit, okay? This kit is going to come with a couple of different pieces. Number one, it's going to come with a, a new insulator for you. So this is going to be a peak insulator. It's going to be higher temperature resistant than the, the stock insulator. Uh, and they're also going to have a new center post airflow screw thing, right? Uh, and it's going to open up your airflow some more, should you want that. Okay, so it's really kind of designed for people who want to maybe go lower resistance in their builds, who want to open up the airflow some more. This is going to be the kit that you're going to be interested in. Now, the stock airflow, it's going to be adjustable, and you're going to be able to get it up to 2.2 millimeters, all right? With this post, 
it's going to open it up even more. It's going to get you open to 2.7 millimeters, but you are going to lose adjustability. So you only get 2.7 millimeters with this one. Uh, why are you losing adjustability? Well, because of the size of this, they couldn't thread it for the adjustment screw and keep it strong enough, okay? So uh, that's why you lose the adjustability with this one. So before we break it down, let's talk a little bit about the vape quality. Um, I have been doing a lot of side-by-side -side vaping, folks, between my k Light Lite Plus, okay, and my k V4. Trying to get my head around if one tastes better than the other. Uh, and I do. I do think that the new one tastes a little bit better. Is it, oh my God, I'm going to tear my underwear off and run in the streets naked better? No, it's not. And it's a good thing that it's not because we don't want to see that. Um, but, but it is slightly ever so slightly improved. I think it's a, um, I think it's a, a fuller, more saturated vape. And the only way I could describe it is, especially with my tribute, it's a juicier vape. That that's like that's the word that I keep coming up with when I when I try to describe it. It is very very close, folks, okay? Most people probably won't even notice the difference. It's an outstanding vape. They still have little flavor fairies in there working on the juice for you. Um but I I do think maybe it's because of the airflow because with the original design we're getting air from that little hole right there. Okay, you see it? Uh, but with the uh, the new design, we're getting air from there and there and there and there, four different places. Of course, it's still all feeding into the same the same spot, uh, but it does wind up uh, make, giving it a little bit more air, and I think that's improving the flavor ever so slightly. So, is it on par with this? Absolutely. It's you know it's the same same kind of vape, right? But I do think it's that much better. That much better. Let's go ahead and vape it again. The amount of vapor seems to be the same as the um, the light plus. The experience is fantastic. It's just a fully saturated vape. The throat hit is right where I want it to be with with and right where I would expect it to be with a K fun. I do have it open a little bit more than this one. This one's a little bit harder to draw on. It's just an outstanding vape, folks. It's 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 it, uh, you know, in my humble opinion, with the um, uh, you know the especially a single coil tank, it's it's one of the finer vapes that you're going to find out there. Now let's break it down. Let's take a look at the pieces and parts. Not that much. Not this much. Not that much. We don't have to go that far, okay? But I am going to show you the different tank options. We'll show you the build deck. We'll put a build in here, uh, and then uh, after that, I'll show you how to uh, to change the bottom connector. Don't get nervous about changing the bottom connector. If you don't want to do it, if you don't have to do it, you don't you don't need to, okay? You can certainly use the uh, the standard 510 connection on it with all of your 510 devices, uh, but I am going to show you how to put the, uh, the P3 connector on it. Okay, so let's drain this tank, let's clean it up, and let's show you the pieces and parts, or some of the pieces and parts. Okay, folks, so I have this way broken down for you, not broken down as far as it will go, uh, but I wanna show you the different tank configurations. So we're not even gonna talk about the build deck yet. All right, so let's talk about the first configuration, which is going to be the uh, polycarbonate tank only. All right, so for this, we're gonna use the top section of the, um, the top cap right here. We're gonna screw this on like this. And then we're gonna take this piece right here Okay, and we're going to screw this on like that. And then we're going to take this piece, is which, and this is going to be the piece that we use to fill this with. And that's going to press fit against the um, that top shaft with a little O-ring right there. And then we're just going to tighten that down. And then we're going to put our drip tip on. And that is the look that we're going to get with that tank, uh, that, that polycarbonate tank in place. Okay, so now if we want to use either our metal tank section or our glass tank section, we have to add a few parts, and that's going to be these two parts right here. It's actually three because this one has this counter nut in it that sits right on top of this little hole right here, and you'll see how we, we do this. But if we hold these both upside down, or actually this one would be right side up, uh, you're going to see the O-rings, and those two O-rings, this is what's going to 
hold those tank sections in place and you can see there is a bevel. It's, it almost winds up looking like a little barrel uh, and that, that little bulge is where the, uh, the tank is going to sit. So uh, for this we're going to add this and we're going to screw that top part on that we used before. Let's go ahead and screw that on. Okay, and I want that nut to stay in place, so I am going to screw in the um, the fill port, if you will. Okay, so that's going to kind of hold that in place. So now we pick the tank that we want. Uh, let's go ahead and put the uh, the metal tank in. Let's put it in the right way. Okay, it's really hard to see what this uh, says in, on camera, but I believe this is the right way. So we take our bottom part, we sit it right on top there like that. We take our top part, we put it just like that. Okay, and now we just screw this assembly into it like this. All right, and this is going to hold everything together. And what's going to happen is that uh, counter nut that you saw up at the top, uh, that is going to be held in place by um, this threading right there. So let's go ahead and do that now. Hold this all together and just start screwing. Okay, and it's actually going to grab this section here too. And it'll start to tighten. It's tightening now. And there we go, we're all tightened up. And then we would go ahead and put our build deck in. And then we wind up with this look. Let's go ahead and just tighten that a little bit. Put our drip tip in. And this is the look we wind up with. Of course, this would be tight at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and put the, uh, the glass section on now. Let's uh, remove this build deck. Let's unscrew the tank. This time I'm actually doing it the right way. Okay, that comes out. We take our metal piece out. We put our glass piece in. And then we screw it back together again. Okay, now if it doesn't capture, make sure that your nut is in the right place. It is, so it should capture just fine. But this time you'll actually see it start to screw in there. There it goes. Okay, getting tight now. Nice and tight. And then we put our build deck in. And our drip tip is already on. And this is the look that we wind up with. All right, guys, now let's take a look at the, uh, the build deck and compare it side by side with a, uh, a, I don't think this is a light plus, this is a light. Yeah, this is a light, okay? Uh, but, but it's the same build deck, okay? Uh, so first of all, we have this top part of the chimney that I can unscrew. Where's the top part of the chimney on uh, this one? Uh, well, it doesn't exist here, okay? Nothing screws onto here. The top part of the chimney is actually inside the rest of the device, okay? So we get that chimney when we go ahead and tighten this down. All right, so we don't have a top part of the chimney. So let's unscrew the uh, the bottom part of the chimney after we focus, okay, and we see the build deck. Uh, let's go ahead and unscrew the bottom part of the chimney on the original, and we will see the build deck, all right? So uh, much different build decks here. Uh, you can notice that the, uh, the airflow is opened up a little bit more than this one here, and we notice four screws here instead of just two. Um, why is that? This is designed for a dual coil, right, Phil? Uh, no, actually it's not. Uh, in talking to them, uh, this is still designed for a single coil. The additional screws there are to give you um, uh, more of an ease of mounting or different mounting possibilities. However, because of the fact that there are four screws here, obviously creating a dual coil build on this will be a lot easier than it was on this one. Okay, So for you folks who are fans of dual coils, you can certainly do it a lot easier on the new one than you could on the old one. Now on the old one, the wick would go down here and the channels would feed the e-liquid up these channels right here. There's one channel there, there's one channel there. On the new one, you'll notice there are no channels, but there are these holes here. And that's what feeds the liquid up to the coil or the, um, the wick, which is going to feed right down here. Okay, so that's the, uh, the difference in the, uh, the build decks. So you can see that right there. All right, so before I put the build in this, I am going to change this 510 connection back out to the, uh, the P3 connection for the Pro Vary. Okay, um, this gets a little bit hairy. There's a lot of little pieces and parts in here. Uh, so if uh, you're not interested in this section and little pieces and parts scare the hell out of you, uh, please do fast forward past this section. All right, so the first thing we wanna do 
is close the uh, the juice control because that's going to actually raise the entire deck. Okay, so we close the juice control by unscrewing it. Okay, remember how we unscrewed it from the device first before we unscrewed that top fill port? That's what we have to do here. So let's unscrew it. And as I do, you're going to notice right in here the entire build deck starts to raise. Okay, and that's how it closes the juice uh, flow. So we continue to unscrew this until it's all the way up which is right there okay and then we just finish it off by pulling it off okay okay so this is off so let's set this entire piece aside for now we're not going to need it let's take this spring out of here let's put this over here because we're not going to need that spring until we get the rest of this apart how do we get the rest of this apart all right let's go ahead and take the 510 pin out first not with that screwdriver that's just silly uh, let's use this screwdriver here and we'll take the 510 pin out Okay, let's take that insulator out too. All right, so there's that insulator. Now, once that pin is out, there's another insulator and a nut that should fall out right in there. And there it is, there's that insulator and nut. Okay, now uh, we have a, uh, a flat-headed screw down there. Uh, and I don't have the proper screwdriver for this, so I am going to use this screwdriver. We'll just grab one of those threads and we'll start to unscrew this. And eventually that will come out and will fall out like that right there. And once that's out, this whole piece will just come right off. And you can see that right there. Okay, so here's this. We're going to save this. We're going to need this insulator here or this seal. Let's go ahead and take the P3 connector now. Let's put that seal on. Let's sit this back on. Now this piece is also separate, so this will come out. And when this goes back in, you'll notice that it's kind of squared off. We want to make sure that that squared off goes into the squared off section there, otherwise it won't screw down uh, properly. So let's go ahead and put this on. There we go, that snapped in nice. Let's take this first kind of flathead screw, and we'll put that in. All right, let's get that tightened down. Okay, so that's in there now. Uh, this is really not the right tool for this job. We should use a bigger uh, flathead here. We'll get this in there now, much easier. Okay, it's nice and tight. All right, we still have movement here, nice and smooth. Now what we'll do is we'll flip this over. Okay, now we see the new P3 connection. We'll take this little insulator here and put that in there. Okay. And we'll put our 510 pin back in. Okay. And that 510 pin is going to connect to this little insulator and nut right here. And we kind of should have put this in there first. But let's go ahead and put it in now. We'll hold that in place. Tighten it down. Okay, there we go. That's nice and tight. All right, so now before we sit our build deck back on here, okay, we got to remember that little spring, okay? That's kind of important. Let's put that little spring right there. All right, let's sit this on, and it'll it'll kind of just pop into place uh, when it's in the right orientation. So you see I'm rotating, rotating, and then it just kind of falls in there like that. And then what we do is we start to open our juice control, and that'll suck the deck back in there. So let's go ahead and do that, and you'll see it start pulling back into the body. And I'm looking right there, and you can see it is going in. Okay. And there you go. Now you'll notice here, there is a little bit of a flange right there, okay? So this actually matches up uh, nicely with the Provary. Uh, if I screw this on, you'll see how nice that looks right there. Okay, because it does kind of make this, which is uh, inherently a, a 22 millimeter device, uh, the same dimensions or the same diameter as the uh, P3. Now, Svomesto does recommend that when you do remove this uh, to go ahead and work on your build, that your juice flow control is completely opened, okay? So completely tightened, um, and that will allow you to open this up a little bit easier, okay? Okay, so for my build, a uh, pretty standard build for this. Uh, this is my 28 gauge Cantel, around a two and a quarter mil uh, drill bit. Uh, you can go ahead and experiment and play with that. We have plenty of screws down here to work with. So let's go ahead and capture this uh, coil in here and we can pretty it up later on. Just, kind of just hold that in place. Bring that around there. Oops, get back in camera. Tighten this up. OK, 
Okay, so there's one lead. Let's go around here for the other lead. Make sure that's under there all the way. That's tight. Right, so we got our coil in here. We can go ahead and pull this up and position this however we like. We want it directly over that air hole right there. Might be sitting a little bit too high, but that's no big deal. All right, let's twist and tug. All right, let's screw this onto the P3 and see what we get. And we can tighten that coil up a little bit. There she comes. All right, so now I'll use my ceramic tweezers. Where are they? They're here. And we'll just tighten that up a little bit. Beautiful. All right. Now one thing with this design, we can actually put the first part of our chimney before we wick this, okay? Uh, and the chimney only goes on a certain way. Uh, you'll notice there's threading there, there's no threading here. So we can just go ahead and screw this on. Okay, and you'll notice that coil just kind of peeks through right there. Okay, so we can, uh, it actually makes uh, wicking this a little bit easier. So I've got a strip of my cogen dough. I'm going to take just a little bit of it off. Give it a little twist, and we'll set it in that coil. Okay, and as always, I like my cotton a little bit tight in the coil. I actually like it a little bit tighter than that, but we'll call this good enough for now. So I'm going to trim this, and I'm going to trim this just a little bit past uh, where the chimney is. So I'm going to tr trim it right about there and there. Okay. And then I'll just use a uh, micro screwdriver and we'll just go ahead and push this into the, um, the chimney or the, the build deck. Just like that. Folks, this is kind of a plain and boring build, but this plain and boring build happens to work beautifully. Okay, so now before we put the rest of the tank on, let's go ahead and juice this up a little bit. give her a test fire. Wonderful. We'll look at our resistance. 1.8. So I went uh, one more wrap than I usually go there probably. No big deal. We'll just crank up the watts a little bit. Close our tank or reassemble our tank. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fill this. So again, we're going to unscrew here and then unscrew here. So we hold this. We unscrew it. That'll shut down our juice flow. We unscrew it up top. We fill her up. Oh, filling this is such a joy. Actually, I just went a little bit too far that time. Screw this back down here. One motion, tighten here, and then tighten down here. And ladies and gentlemen, we are good to vape. You see that juice start to work its way in there. Okay, so I know that looked like a lot, all right? And it was a lot. But just keep in mind that really what you're going to be doing with this is you're going to be unscrewing here, unscrewing here to fill it, screwing here, screwing here to use it. Um, and then you're going to be unscrewing this section right here after you open it, all right, to work on your build. Um, so really, don't let the number of pieces and parts scare you on this one the build and operation of the device is actually very, very easy. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and have a vape. I'm probably going to have to crank the, uh, the watts up a little bit. There's a pretty good right there. Isn't Cogendo and um, Cantel just a wonderful combination? It's just like it's so perfect right off the bat. All right, so we'll go up to 14 watts. 14 watts. All right, let that lock in, and we'll go ahead and have a vape now. Hmm. Much better. Usually I'm around at that 1.4 build, but I, I think I went one too many loops, or one too many uh, wraps. 
That's just a terrific vape. You know, I was thinking about this one uh, because it's pricey, right? It's pricey. Uh, and I know a lot of people are, are going to say, eh, it costs too much and I'm just going to wait for the clone. Um, I, I don't say this often, but I'm going to say it with this one. Keep that in mind, okay? Th that picture that I showed you, all those pieces and parts and everything, keep that in mind. There's a certain expense to that, okay? There's a certain, I mean, there's got to be a lot of prototyping, and there's a lot of brain power that goes into this too, and, and you're paying for some of that, all right? Uh, you know, the cloners, there's no intelligence there. There's no there's no prototyping. There's no trial and error. There's no troubleshooting. There's no time to development. They copy it. They copy it. So, um, you know, this one, is it worth it? To me, it is. To me, it is. It's just such an excellent, excellent product. I mean, it really has changed the way a lot of us vape. I mean, the, the K-Fun, I fell in love with it instantly. And this one, I've noticed that. Um, psychological or subconsciously is the right word. I just grab at, at the in the morning what works. Most of the times I'm grabbing what I'm reviewing, right? But but when I'm not reviewing, I grab what works. Uh, and I have been grabbing this a lot because it's just such a pleasure, and it just works perfectly, and it's now easy to fill. Uh, so uh, this has become my new favorite Addy, really. easily so thumbs up thumbs down one thing i didn't talk about was build quality uh folks this is meticulously engineered i mean all of the threading is beautiful on it it's so rock solid when, when you start to work with it you get a certain appreciation for it so anyway thumbs up thumbs down okay let's be fair let's do some thumbs up thumbs down i will start with thumbs down okay thumbs down on this one what are the thumbs down not a lot. We lost the mill of, of liquid capacity, which is kind of made up for by how easy it is to fill. All right, so there's that. Um, getting this off, the build section off, especially when I first got it, I actually contacted him like, I can't get it apart, all right? And he actually showed me the trick of putting the little screwdriver there and using that to, to open it up, okay? So uh, there's that. There's no serial number on the device itself, okay? I know some of you guys are like freaks when it comes to uh, serial numbers. Uh, nothing on the device, only on the box. Some of you will see that as a thumbs down. How you get to the airflow controller and the fact that you do need to use a tool to adjust the airflow. Would I rather it be out here on the side? Uh, yes, I would, okay? But it's to me, it's really not that big of a deal. Once I said it, I haven't touched it, okay? Uh, but some of you are going to see that as a thumbs down, so that's why I'm mentioning it. Uh, and another small potential thumbs down, and this is going to be a very subjective thing because I happen to love the way this looks. Some people are not going to love the bulge, okay? That little barrel look that you get with that. All right, so a subjective thumbs down. All right, so what about some thumbs up on this one? Uh, build quality. It is terrific. Uh, like I said, you know, should you be able to get one um, and you start working with it, you'll realize how rock solid this piece is, okay? Um, performance. It performs as good if not better than the original k funds okay uh in vapor in flavor in throat hit uh you know especially flavor these really are flavor machines okay we now have a much quieter device that's another thumbs up filling this uh we no longer have the issue with going through the bottom using a tool um or you know doing that top fill method while you hold the air uh plug you fill it up you capture the threads, you hold it upside down, you, re you don't have to worry about any of that stuff, okay? I have yet to have this uh, flood. I, I haven't gotten any leaking out of this with the build that you just saw. It's been working flawlessly. Again, the looks, personally, I like the way it looks. I like the fact that it comes with three different tank options. I like the fact that you can get different connectors, and I can kind of hybrid this onto the other uh, P3. Or if you have one, a Semivar. Or if you have one, a Stingray or in the future, a nemesis. Um, I don't personally, but I know a lot of people are gonna like the fact that um, it's a lot easier to do a dual coil build should you want to do a build like that. 
Um, I don't particularly need this, but I know a lot of people are going to like this S4 kit should you want to do a lower resistance build, a higher temperature build, or want to open up your airflow some more. I like the fact that we now get a glass tank with this. I know I said we get three tanks. Yes, I, but we get a glass one now too. And I like the fact that it comes with a manual. You know, so many of these devices, you know, especially rebuildables, they throw it in a box and they give it to you. And, you know, unless you use the force or you go on YouTube or you already know how to build it, you have no idea how to work with it. Uh, the manual goes through how to build it, how to fill it, how to work with it, how to change the connections, everything. It's all in here. So it comes across as a more professional, more complete product. And really, that's about all that I can say about it. Overall, it does get a very, very strong thumbs up. I think it's a fantastic product. I think it's a fantastic device. Uh, I think it performs flawlessly when you got a good build in there. You saw my build. It's really easy to do. Uh, and it just works so well. So there you go, folks. That's a rather long, rather detailed look at the new Svomesto K-Fun V4. Uh, I think it's pretty special. Okay, and um, now we got to add to the stocking. Oh, I got a good one for you tonight. Okay, what are we adding? A brand new K4. How about that? Uh, this one is still sealed right there. You see the seal is still on it. So uh, sincerely, Svomesto, uh, thank you very much uh, for this. And from all my viewers, thank you. Uh, and this is going in the stocking. So there we go. A brand new K-Fun V4 for you guys added to the stocking. And let me tell you something. That was tough for me to do because I, I, I would really like another one. Uh, and I will gladly pay for another one. Uh, just to have this kind of quality and have a couple different liquids in a couple different tanks and maybe this one uh, You know for the p4 with the p4 connector and the other one uh, with a with a standard 510 connection for some of my other devices my DNA devices uh, You bet I'm gonna have another one So there you go. That's it for this video. That's it for this look at the K-Fun V4. Uh, I hope you found some of that information helpful as always you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Can I taste your juice?